Well hello there, and today we are going to be showing you the guide to Dragma. Now what is Dragma, I hear you ask. Well thank you for asking Noobmaster69, who is still simping over Pokemon. Dragma is a deck that comes out in the Rise of the Duelist set. Rise of the Duelist will be available for us in the TCG in August, all providing, you know, the big C goes away. Some other stuff in this set that you can also look forward to is stuff like three tactical talents, Blizzard, some new cards for Adamancipator, which I'm sure everyone's excited about, and of course the new Gaia support. So why is people talking about this being the next big splashable engine in the game? To simply put it, it's because it is probably going to be the next big splashable engine in the game. The deck is very versatile and only locks you out of your extra deck after you go ahead and start using the Dragma cards. But what are the Dragma cards, I hear you ask? Well, here we see all of the Dragma cards that are currently available in the OCG, and like I said, we will get in the Rise of the Duelist set in August. The top five here are the ones that you use, and the bottom five here are the ones you do not use, and you do, of course, use the Fusion, which is comedically called Bastard for some reason. We'll go over the ones you don't use first, as they may eventually become of use, of course, when we get ban lists and stuff, and people might want to use these, maybe play Pure Dragma or something. However, the deck, in my opinion, is best used as an engine, and we'll go through some of the decks it synergizes with later. Starting off with a Din. A Din cannot be destroyed by battle with a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck. It has good protection, and all have the summoning condition that if a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck is currently on the field, you can special summon the card from your hand. This, of course, is if you control something, or your opponent controls something, so it makes the deck very versatile going first or second. However, if this card is destroyed on the field you do get a special summon a dragma from your deck except a copy of itself however it's just slow you have to summon it you have to wait for it to die just to summon something for it to get another effect in my opinion you do not use it and you use the top five in the engine we will talk about later on next you go to canadel the big boss monster as such and with this you have to banish four monsters fusion synchro exia link blah 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 blah, blah just to special summon it and it's pretty big. 3200 is pretty big. However, it does have an effect at the start of the damage step. If this card battles a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, you get to destroy as many monsters as your opponent controls and then flit 800 damage for each one that was a Synchro Exia Link or, you know, Fusion Synchro Exia Link. This card is a little slow, it is big, and it might be good in a pure build as such. However, in the engine build that most people are playing and is topping in the OCG, again, they do not use this. Theo, I just don't know why it exists, again, has the condition that you get to special summon it if you have a monster, and you can target a face-up monster that was special summoned until the end phase. It gains 600 attack, and if it does, this, the, the targeted card loses 600 attack. It's a normal summon, and it might be used in pure Dragma, but not in any build of the engine. The field spell is pretty good. Neither player can target Dragma monsters you control, and after damage calculation, if a Dragma monster did battle a monster that um, battled a monster, you can destroy that monster. So it provides uh, targeting protection and a little bit of destruction. However, you're using this mainly as an engine to turbo out some stuff and search the hand trap as such along the way. Also, if it does leave the field zone, uh, you can activate uh, the effect to send one monster from the extra to the grave, which is kind of the gimmick of this deck, and we'll get onto some of the stuff that you send after. And the last one is Dragma Encounter. This gets you special summon a Dragma monster, or the Nulis, Fulis, whatever the thing is called, from your hand, or take a Dragma monster, or the Nulis, Fulis, or whatever it's called, from the graveyard, and add it to your hand, or special summon it, and you can only activate it once per turn. The only issue is, it's a trap, and it's too slow and does not really generate too much advantage other than special summoning a Dragma. Again, these might be good in pure, but we're talking more of Dragma as a whole engine. And we're going to get on to the main attraction itself, the five Dragma cards that you use. Maximus, Ecclesia, and Fleur are the big three that you use. You will be probably playing three Ecclesia, two Fleur, and one, two, or three Maximus, depending on how ballsy you're feeling. We'll get into their effects. Ecclesia, obviously it has the same summoning condition as them all. If a monster was special summoned from the extra deck is on the field, you get a special summon from your hand. However, you can just also just normal summon this card. When it is normal or special, you get to add any Dragma card from your deck to your hand, except a copy of itself. It's the searcher, it's the rotor, and it's the best one. You play three of this, there's no questioning about it. 
you want to see this or the spell which will help you get to this to do any of the box standard combos. From there we talk about Fleur de Lis. Fleur de Lis is the hand trap during the main phase, so either player's main phase, if a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, again can be you or your opponent, is on the field, quick effect you can special summon this card from your hand. This is pretty good. If your opponent's making a big board, you can go ahead and special summon it, and it might protect you from being OTK'd. However, if you control another Dragma card, you can then negate the effects of one face-up monster on the field. This basically becomes a searchable hand trap that allows you to negate, obviously, one monster on the field. But it has a third effect. When a Dragma monster declares an attack, you can make all Dragma monsters you currently control gain 500 attack. You can only use the effect of this once per turn. It's good, it's the searchable hand trap, and you tend to search this on the end phase with Bastard, which we will get onto later. The last one you play is Maximus Dragma. You get to banish a monster, Fusion, Synchro, Xe, or Link, from your graveyard to special summon it. It does have 3k defense, and of course, being able to summon something in defense does get you around stuff like Lightning Storm. And 3k is kind of hard to out sometimes. Anyway, main effect is during your main phase, you can send two monsters with different names from your extra deck to the graveyard, and then your opponent also sends two monsters from their extra deck to the graveyard. And after that, you of course cannot special summon from the extra deck from the rest of the turn, but it's fine. We will get on to how you play this deck later. This card is the be all and end all of the deck, in my opinion. You can go so plus off this card, or you can go so neg off this card. Right now in the OCG, people are playing counters for Dragma, and this may go ahead and correspond to the TCG. Now, what counters are there? Basically, because your opponent sends two monsters, they can also do stuff that you're going to do. You're going to send cards like Elder Entity Ints and the El Shadol Engine and stuff like that to generate advantage, but your opponent can also just do the same. They can send an Ints and pop a card. They can even send Cyber Dragon Nova, which then allows them to special summon any machine from their extra deck. You then might have to deal with a Macabre, even just something like a big Cyber Dragon Infinity, Cyber Twin. Any big machine monster can be summoned. Actually, I think it has to be a, a fusion. But it kind of is the be all end all of deck, and you will find that towards the beginning of the Dragma cycle, people were playing three, two, and now people are only really playing one of this. I'm still playing two, so the ratios I'm going for are three Ecclesia, two Fleur, and two Maximus. But we're going to move on to the spell and trap as well. Discipline lets you send a monster from your extra deck. Then you can add a Dragma monster, or Felice, whatever it's called, from your deck to the graveyard. Then add one from your hand with attack less than it. You can send Ints, pop a card, and then search for the Ecclesia, or you can send the Shadol and do the Shadol loop we will be talking about after. And the last one is the Trap Dragma Punishment. You can target a face-up monster your opponent controls, send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard with attack equal to or higher than it, and if you do destroy the target, until the end of your next turn, after this card resolves, you cannot special summon from the extra deck. This card has the biggest restriction out of all of the Dragmas, as you're obviously going to be probably playing this on your opponent's turn, and it also loops over to the next turn. So you want to go ahead and use this wisely, as you aren't going to be summoning from the extra deck after it. However, you're going to play cards or engines that sort of set the board up and don't do nothing after. So this restriction isn't the biggest problem. Also, once again, you get to send something from your extra deck to the grave. So this can potentially just pop two with, of course, you sending something like Elder Entity Ints. Uh, the only downside to this, in my opinion, is one, it is a trap, and of course, it also targets. Some stuff cannot out this. However, popping this really early into the turn to pop potentially two is pretty big. For instance, they say they go Jet Synchron, Jet Synchron into Link, um, Karibo, revive back the Jet Synchron, you go ahead and drag my punishment here, sending Ints, they've got rid of the Jet Synchron and the Link Karibo, and you are sitting Custy with probably still your negates in hand but that is it on top of that we've also got bastard which on the end phase if it's been sent you get to search for a dragma card like i said you usually send this and we will be searching for fleur on the end phase so it becomes a searchable hand trap so what builds will you be playing the dragma engine in the most popular one right now in japan is dragma invoked three alistair three meltdown two invocation and a terraforming 
with the Dragma engine, puts you to about 20-ish, 21 cards, which allows 19 hand traps to pretty much be played in the deck to consistently say no to your opponent. This is basically the core of the deck. However, I found I draw at least seven Alistars in my five card opening hand, so I cut the terraforming, and this is the invoked list I was testing all last night. Important things to know is the Shadol Rooked and the Shadol Beast, because they generate a lot of advantage when you do the Dragma combo, which we will show you later on. Other things to also note is cards like Three Tactical Talents will of course be legal when Dragma comes out, so if you're going to go ahead and playtest this Ready for the Rise of the Duelist set, you may as well start using Three Tactical Talents, you may as well start using Blizzard, and you may as well start using all the other stuff. The extra deck is pretty crammed, two Macabre per trio, the new invoked card that we got in the Eternity Code set, two Bastards, a Construct, two Akpalones, a Winder, two Ents, a Link Rebo, a Secure Gardener, and an Almirage. But this isn't the only build of Dragma that you can play. Any deck that can Special Summon consistently from the extra deck can splash the Dragma engine in, as well as cards that can send from the extra deck, like Necros, which I would say is the second most popular build. However, I have come up with Synchro Dragma. This basically just takes advantage of the fact that Needle Fiber is still not banned, Link Cross is still not banned, Auroradon is still not banned, Borrowload is still not banned, Herald is still not banned, and this will basically end on the bog standard Synchro Needle Fibery Jet Synchro combo you see in every deck. And then after you've gone ahead and put up your two negates on the board of a single Jet Synchron, you can then go ahead and search a hand trap and special summon a Winder, which makes this deck just beautiful. It's a beautiful deck, it's super consistent, it can play cards like Pot of Avarice to help tutor the Disciple of Nadir if you haven't had drawn it in your opening hand, or the Ecclesia, and of course will still play the Shadol Engine. I opt for one Rooked and one Beast. However, you can just play one Rooked. In order to summon Winder on your opponent's turn, you actually do not need any Shadow Monsters in your deck at all, just the ones in your extra deck, which will be used to make the Winder on your opponent's turn with Rooked. I do, however, like the addition of one Shadow Beast, because if you hard draw the Rooked, you can just sort of add the Beast and discard the Beast and get a draw, which is pretty good. This is my build that I'm going for, and we will show you the board it makes off of a two and a half, quotation mark half, card combo, which is pretty nutty in my opinion. We'll also go ahead and show you the basic invoked combo, as well as the basic Shadol combo. Now I talk a lot about the Shadol engine in the last segment, and today we're going to be showing you the Shadol combo. This combo is used in most variants, the Invoked variant, I believe the Necros variant can use it, and of course in the deck variant I'm currently playing, which is Synchro. We'll go over some of the other variants that this deck can be played with, which is pretty much anything that can special summon from the extra deck, and this is why the deck is so goddamn splashable. All you need to summon an El Shadol Winder on your opponent's turn is Discipline of the Nadir, the spell, and is pretty busted, I'm not going to lie. Summoning a Winder on your opponent's turn is often enough to end their turn, and if you go ahead and play the right engine behind it, can be enough to just end the game. We're going to go ahead and explain this, but one important thing to know is you don't actually have to play any Shadow monsters in your deck. You play one trap, which you will be searching, and that is it. And if you draw it prior to it, it's fine. You can go ahead, however, and still play some Shadow Monsters. I still opt to play one Beast, in case, like I said, you draw the trap. You can still do this combo whilst searching and discarding the Beast to draw a card. First, we're going to go ahead and activate the Disciple of the Nadir. Now, Disciple of the Nadir is going to send one card from your extra deck to the grave, and then after that, you cannot special summon from the extra deck for the rest of the turn. So what you want to do is do any other combo you have prior to this, and then go ahead and start this. So you're going to go ahead and send the App Cologne, allowing you to search for a Dragma card. You're going to go ahead and search for the level 4 that you always search for. The combo starts in itself, Ecclesia. Now, App Cologne does have an effect in the grave. When it is sent, you can add a Shadol card from your deck to the grave. Then you have to discard a card. So what you have to do here is search for the trap, which is Shadol Rook 
which also comes out in Rise of the Duelist. Like I said, if you had draw the Rook, you can still do this combo. So just an old beast, discard the beast, draw a card. It's just advantage, you might draw into that Ash Blossom you need for the next turn, or maybe something else. So you're going to go ahead and search for the copy of Rook, and then discard the copy of Rook. Next, you're going to go ahead and normal, or if you've already done a combo, special summon Ecclesia, which will allow you to search for the next card, which is going to be Maximus Dragma. You can then go ahead and banish the Dragma to special summon it from the other side of the field, and then use the effect to send two cards. This here is where it variates. You're going to go ahead and send a El Shadol Construct and a Bastard to basically trigger their effects. Construct effect will activate, allowing you to add the Rook back to your hand, and then on the end phase, Bastard will activate, allowing you to search for a Dragma card. So this is the box standard combo. All you have to do here is set, and then end phase, the Bastard will activate, allowing you to search for the Fleur de Lis, the Hand Trap as such. And then on your opponent's main phase, you just flip Rook, you banish one Shadol and one Dark Monster to special summon a Winder. And just like that, you've essentially made an El Shadol Winder on your opponent's turn. This is pretty good, you know, your opponent can only special summon one time, and you have a negate for that one time. So, this is pretty good. And then splashing this into an engine on the side, something like the Invoked Engine. You'd also have a Macabre on the board here as well. Uh, you also would have three or four more cards in your hand to potentially also have Negates. This deck, however, does play a lot of Hand Traps and generic stuff. So now that you know the basic Disciple of Nadir Dragma combo, we're going to go over the other combos as such that you can play in the deck starting with the invoked combo as it is the most popular one alistair will of course search you a invocation and then you can link this off into Salomon great almirage then link the almirage off into secure gardener this gives you the light enable to make a macabre you're gonna go ahead and banish the secure gardener and the alistair allowing you to summon the macabre what this does is, of course, allows you to put up a negate before your fifth summon, which, of course, stops the inevitable rock from smashing your board. Of course, then we're going to go ahead and activate Disciple of the Nadir and do the bog standard combo, getting rid of Akpalone. And, of course, Nadir and Akpalone will then resolve, allowing you to search a copy of Rooked and, of course, a Dragma card. And you're going to go ahead and, again, search for Ecclesia. Then, of course, you have to discard, so we'll discard the Rook, which we will just going to go ahead and get back later on. Would you look at that? There's something from the extra deck on the board. We get to special our Ecclesia for free and use its effect to get a Maximus Dragma from the deck. Do we have something from the extra deck? Oh, look at that. That convenient Almirage will be banished in order to summon the Maximus Dragma. And, of course, the Maximus Dragma will go ahead and send Bastard and Construct. And, of course, Construct will allow us to get the Rooked back. And, of course, on the end phase, after we have set this, we will go ahead and search for a Fleur de Lis. So this optimal board of just Alistair and any way to get to this combo will end, of course, on a Mechaba, the searchable hand trap, the Shadow Rooked, which will make a Winder. And, of course, you will also have, if we just give this a quick shuffle, three other cards in your hand, which in this case was pretty good. Two Imperms and a three Tactical Talents. So... Just off this alone, we're going to go with one, two, three, four negates as such, and of course the Shadol Winder, which we have the materials for because of the Construct and the Bastard. Next, we're going to go on to the Synchro Combo. Now, I'm sure everybody who has played the game in the last three months during lockdown online has seen the bog standard jet synchro combo but for those of you that haven't we will go ahead and show you how this works jet synchro will be summoned and linked off into the link karibo we can then discard any card doesn't matter what in this case it's just going to be an imperm in order to get back the jet synchron getting rid of the jet synchron and the link karibo will go ahead and make your halky fibrax or needle fiber which will allow you to summon a tuna from the deck we're going to go ahead and get ourselves the desk bot 01. You can then go ahead and use the Halky Fibrax to link off into the Link Cross, 
which will, of course, special summon not one, but two shiny tokens. We can then use the Despot, the token one, and the token two for the synchro summoning of the Martial Metal Marcher, which will allow us to revive one tuner, which will be Despot. This Jet Synchro is banished now, by the way. We can then go ahead and use the Link Cross and the Martial Metal Marcher in order to make a Barricade Board Blocker, and then use the Barricade Board Blocker and the Despot for Mecha Phantom Beast Auroradon. Auroradon's effect will activate summoning not one, not two, but three tokens, and because we summoned more than two machines at once, Despot triggers in the grave and special summons as well. You can then use the effect of Mecha Phantom Beast Auroradon to get rid of itself and a token to summon a Mecha Phantom Beast from your deck. You are going to go ahead and get yourself a copy of Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion, which is of course a level 2 tuner. We're going to have the level 2, the level 3 and the level 3 in order to make a synchro for 8 for the Borrowload Savage Dragon. From here you get to equip the Mecha Phantom Beast Auroradon, which will give you 3 negates on this right here. And pumps its attack up to, I believe, 4,050, which is pretty good. However, we're not finished. Uh, O-Lion was sent to the grave, so we get a level 3 token, which we can then use the level 3 token and this Despot 1 here in order to make a Herald for an additional negation. But we've still not done Dragma Combo, and we're still not locked out of the extra deck at the moment. But we don't need to do anything else. We've put up our two negates, and we're just going to do the bog standard Dragma Combo now. We're going to go ahead and activate Nadir, and send our copy of Akpalone to the graveyard, and then add ourselves a copy of Rooked, and a copy of the level 4 Ecclesia once again and rinse and repeat this combo we're going to go ahead and discard the rook oh look monsters from the extra deck we get to special summon our ecclesia and add our copy of maximus dragma to our hand the bog standard combo and i absolutely love it maximus dragma do we have anything from the extra deck oh we have a lot now an important thing to note with this build is you can actually play pot of avarice and still do this combo because we have not one not two not three not four not five six seven eight cards now of course we also have uh, two from the extra deck which gives us six cards we summoned from the extra deck which means we can shuffle all of those back if we want and still have a card that was special summoned from the extra deck in the grave and still do this combo whilst going plus one off the pot of avarice but we're not going to do that right now we're just going to special summon the Maximus Dragma banishing anything at all, and then using its effect to send a copy of Construct and a copy of Bastard in order to add the Shadow Rooked back to our hand, and of course set the Shadow Rooked, and then of course on the end phase we get to search for the nice and shiny Fleur de Lys. This combo of Ken then, of course, on your opponent's main phase, we are going to go ahead and activate this and summon the El Shadow Winder. And then when your opponent activates something, the important thing to do here is negate it with the Herald because the Herald tributes for cost, which then gives you the space to summon the Fleur for an additional negate. This, of course, will end on three negates with the Savage, the fourth negate with the Herald, the fifth negate with the Fleur, and, of course, your opponent can only special summon once. And with that, you know at least the basics of Dragma, how they special summon, and the bog standard combos that they can do. The thing I like about this deck is the possibilities are endless. Ignoring the fact it searches a hand trap and makes an El Shadow Winder on your opponent's turn, you can literally splash this in anything. The engine itself is about 9 to 10 cards. You don't even have to play cards like Punishment. However, if you've already sort of drew these things, it just is an additional extender beyond that. If you already have the Ecclesia in your hand, or you already have the Maximus in your hand, or you already have the Fleur in your hand, instead of searching for it when you're climbing up into the window, you would just go ahead and search for this, which just gives you two additional pops, sending cards like Elder Entity Ents to the grave, or even gives you another search on their end phase if you send something like the second copy of Bastard. The fact that this deck 
is such a small engine. Like I said, it means it can be put in anything. Picture the board you can make. Picture your deck you're playing right now, your combo deck. Let's go with water. You've hand looped them, or you've made your needle fiber combo. Then you slap an Elshad or Winder and search a hand trap. You make that dinosaur board that you love that ends on Dalga and Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. And then all of a sudden, tss, you slap a Winder on board, search a hand trap. The deck is broken. It can go in anything. Anything that can put stuff from your extra deck to the grave and set up an established board can also do this combo. The engine is so small. If you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. It's super consistent and I love this deck and cannot wait till August when they inevitably make them all prismatic secret rares and I have to sell my kidneys again. However, one thing to do know, in Japan most of these are rare and it is super affordable. That doesn't mean anything for us, but we never know. If you enjoyed this video and you are looking forward to playing Dragma, let me know what variant you're playing down below. Dragma Invoke, Dragma Necros, Dinosaur Dragma. Combo Dragma, Synchro Dragma, Pendulum Dragma, you can play anything and it's fantastic. So let me know in the comments down below for what you are thinking you're going to play. If you enjoyed the video, like I said, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share this with a friend so he can also play Dragma. And we can inevitably have a tier 0 Dragma format because in maybe a future video I will explain how bad the Dragma mirror match is because it's horrible. And makes it so much harder to deal with. An important thing to note guys. Just because you're getting advantage off the Dragma. Doesn't mean your opponent is losing because of it. Bear that in mind. You'll understand when the format unfolds. It's been your boy Screech guys. Peace.